the Nana de Nanonia is an archipelago of about 21 islands lying 345 kilometers northeast of continental Brazil. The main island is 1,674 hectares and was discovered by the Portuguese in the early 1500s. Since that time it served as a Portuguese fort and penal colony and more recently a Brazilian military base with occupation by the American military during World War I and World War II. Since 1988, the island has been freehold land with a few thousand permanent inhabitants. Brazilians generally think of the island as paradise and it does have some of the most beautiful beaches in the world here, but the focus has generally in the past been on marine conservation with emphasis on turtles and dolphins. The terrestrial aspects of the island have tended to be neglected, the forest has been completely destroyed by logging and fire, and a number of invasive species are present. These include uh, cats and rats, which you might normally find on tropical islands around the world, but also some unique Brazilian invasive species such as the teju and moco, which are actually native to continental Brazil. For the last three years, I've been collaborating with CLIAJ, the Brazilian Institute for Conservation Medicine, and the University of Sao Paulo to help do some baseline population biology studies of the impacts of the terrestrial invasive species on Fernando de Noronha. In particular, I've been working on the invasive rats and we've been undertaking muck recapture studies for three years across the wet and the dry seasons to understand the population dynamics. What we've found is the density of rats uh, fluctuates from about 30 to 50 per hectare over the course of the year. When we first started studying Tejas in Fernando de Noronha, we thought it was introduced on, on the 50s, because uh, that, that's the story people tell on the island. But uh, reading more about it on the history books, we found a report saying that it's, it was here on the early 20th century. So we now know it, was, it is here for at least about 100 years, and it's caused impact ever since. And we don't know exactly how big is that impact. They are very big as well, they can grow up to 5 or 7 kilos and up to 1.5 meter from tail to mouth. We wanted to know how many lizards are in the island so we could have a, a, at least an idea on what's the size of the problem. And I made some micro capture studies and also I made some transect census countings. And we found that we have at least 7 but up to 12,000 lizards living in the island by now. We also found that their home ranges can be up to seven hectares. And they are very much everywhere, but they use a lot of the open lands. The rock kiwi is a species that is native to Brazil. It's a rodent, it's a Cavidi rodent. It's related to capybaras and guinea pigs. And it lives in a really, really, really dry habitat in Brazil, so it has lots of adaptations for that. It hides from the predators, it doesn't choose to fight, and it uh, even has a quite interesting alarm system to identify where the predator is coming from, so the rock caves that are around the colony, they don't get face to face with the predators when they're coming back to the colony. The rock cave was introduced in Noronha between 19... 67 and 1969. We have some different versions of it, but uh, we know that they were brought by the military that uh, occupied the island before the island became touristic, and they brought it as a meat source, some sort of a backup plan. If the boat wouldn't arrive in the island, they would have the rock heavy to, to feed on. On the island, we can say that they are a food source for cats, for sure and also regarding their impact in the island, we didn't really notice it to be a negative impact or a heavily negative impact. We still have to study it further, but it seems that the rock cave is not such a problem, such a priority species here. Fernando de Noronha is a really important conservation site. It has a number of unique species, some of them found only here. The Mabuya lizard actually has an origin from Africa and is endemic to Fernando de Noronha, and it's also one of the hotspots of seabird diversity in the tropical Atlantic. So by focusing on terrestrial invasive species management, we can really help benefit the conservation of these species on Fernando de Noronha. The main impact of cats in the island is probably the predation of other animals. And we made us an isotope analysis and we found that almost half of their diet is composed of a small lizard, which is native to Romania, it's called Mabuya. And around one third of their diet is composed of birds. And most of them are uh, 
migratory birds that use the, they use the island to nest. We spotlighted cats uh, throughout the island and we counted around 1,300 cats. Uh, most of them are close to the people in, in the urban area of the island, but some of them are in the peripheral zones. It's around 400 or, or so cats that may be found. The other impacts include disease transmission, especially the toxoplasmosis, which is affecting people that live in the island. The outcome of this collaboration is we can put forward an invasive species management plan to Wasimbio, the government agency in charge of conservation through the National Park of Fernando de Noronha. By focusing on a flagship conservation species, the endemic Mabuya, found only on Fernando de Noronha, they can set up some management areas for invasive rat control and teju control and removal of feral cats and look at options for invasive species eradication on some of the offshore islets such as uh, rat eradication for conservation of the diversity of seabirds that are found on Fernando de Noronha.